You know, when I first hear the name Aki, I think of two things. The first one being how intriguing of a character he is. And the second, more important one, the absurd amount of Angel Devil Aki fanner out there. And before you say anything, it's Angel X Aki, not Aki X Angel, there's a difference, okay? That man is definitely a bottom, and I'll take that to the grave. Jokes aside, Aki is portrayed as a stoic and serious character for the majority of his screen time, driven by a tragic past and a single-minded quest for revenge against the gun devil. <laughs> And just as he was about to make a major development as a character, is then swiftly taken out by Makima, emphasizing the futility of his individual efforts against overwhelming forces, and solidifies how little he mattered in the story as a whole. And uh, aside from that, that's kinda it. What I should have specified is what I find intriguing about Aki is the small amount of development and lack of importance he has throughout the series. While you can't consider the development we get of Aki satisfactory, and he does accomplish a few things in the series, I personally didn't think too much of it. Like when he turned into the gun devil and was eventually defeated by Denji, I was more sad about Denji than Aki knowing how much damage this would do to his psyche, especially where he was mentally at this point of the series. And honestly, I think his character was intentionally written this way, a character that really didn't matter in the grand scheme of the other forces in the series. Symbolically or thematically, Aki was made to be average and eventually forgotten. He's introduced to the story because characters that tend to fit the average forgotten guy trope has a really good chance of becoming a main character. <sighs> But as we all know, it doesn't end up being this way, with Aki's character being killed off right when his development reaches a climax. Even so, Aki's lackluster importance in the series somehow, against all odds, elevates the storytelling. So today I wanted to talk about Aki, how he's portrayed in the show as being unimportant and how it makes the storytelling as a whole even more remarkable. But anyways, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to talk about Aki as a character without mentioning Makima. For the majority of the show, most of his major actions are implied to be controlled by Makima since day one. For most of the series, Makima strategically exploits Aki's vulnerabilities, particularly his desire for revenge against the Gun Devil, with his ultimate downfall and transformation to the Gun Fiend serving as a poignant, pugnant, 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 pugnant. Poignant, poignant, ponyo, ponyo. <laughs> How do you actually say that? Poignant. Poignant? Poignant. Poignant? Fuck that, dude. I'm just gonna use a different word. With this ultimate downfall and transformation into the gun fiend serving as an important plot point, the lack of distinctiveness and emotional restraint makes him an ideal pawn for Makima's manipulative schemes. And what I want to focus on is his lack of distinctiveness. Whether you believe he acts the way he acts because of his personality or Makima's influence, it's hard to say he is unique in any way, aside from his association and relationship with Denji. Let's take a look at the International Assassin's arc, where one of the American assassins takes the identity of Kurose. I could say that with a more Japanese puncture, Kurose. Ah, uh, whatever. Kurose, we're American here, motherfucker. Okay, I can't do an eagle screech. Anyways, I'll just put one in here. Cool. Thanks, me. During this scene, we take a look at his life before his death. Having friends, a loving partner, and even a brother that passed in his childhood, similar to Aki. While this serves more as an exposition for Aldo to continue his mission, what I want to focus on is that Kurose also has a past, even if it may not be as dark as Aki's. But we don't see this because of the emphasis of Aki in the series. It isn't because of a difference of significance or importance of their past, but just because Makima chose him to be with Denji. Now that I think about it, the fact that Kurose is not as dark and moody as Aki speaks volumes about both of their developments. This shows that Kurose didn't hold on to the past, rather than looking more forward and not letting his past stump his growth like Aki. Aki had every chance to grow and develop similar to Kurose, but he didn't. And sadly, that realization was learned too late. Let's imagine Kurose was in charge of keeping an eye on Denji, and Aki was assigned to partner with Nendo. I personally believe that the trajectory of the series would still be exactly the same, with the audience having a better perspective of Kurose's desires, motivations, development, and lots more. And if Aki were to get the same amount of screen time as Kurose, would just seem as the edgy side character with a dark past who you're meant to not care about that everyone glazes just because he's moody. And emo. 
that's important. Look, what I'm trying to say is that the only reason why we care more about Aki compared to the other side characters is only because his association with Denji, which is only due to and controlled by Makima. Aki was meant to be unimportant, but that's the whole point. He wasn't special, he wasn't important, he was just there. The majority of the side characters, whether they be a protagonist or antagonist, has their own individual pasts, motivations, and plenty of other aspects that makes a character uh, a character. What the fuck? Oh, okay. Yo. Hey, what's going on? I, I was in the middle of a video, what's up? What kind of video? Oh, I, I forgot, I didn't tell you. Um, I was going to make a video about Aki, I don't really think he's like an interesting character, I'll be honest. Oh, finally! Somebody what? gets it! Oh, holy wait, shit! Wait, really? Dude, holy, wait, Aki wait, 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 so you're, you're, wait, wait, you're, wait, okay, so you're telling me that we're thinking the same thing here? We usually disagree on stuff, oh my god, wait. I mean, yeah, your Demon Slayer take was terrible, okay, but yeah. Okay, wait, no, hold Aki. on, hold on, yeah, Aki, Aki, let's talk Aki here, okay? Yeah, let's, let's keep this focused. So, why do you think he's boring? I just, I think he's lame and he's basically... Not and he even sucks. A character. Yeah, no, he's yeah, awful. that's like, yeah, he's shit. lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I hundred percent. Oh my god, like, like, reason like, number oh my god, one, he is so garbage. Right reason now. number two, oh, holy reason shit. Reason number seventeen thousand four hundred eighty-six. <laughs> I swear to God, got, we got more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> Part one, Makima's. What was it? Ma Makima's goon streak. <clears throat> As the relationship between Denji and Makima was established throughout the start of Chainsaw Man, it sort of felt like she was supposed to embody the kind of system rigged against individual people. Where, being a system, its power comes from the fact that people need it to exist as a group. But unless they individually push back against it somewhat to reinforce their own value, they'll just be eaten up. It exists across them, so it doesn't need any individual member but it relies on how its members in total can't change their methods or their needs for that system. And that seems to be what the devils are modeled after overall, fears being one of the purest examples of different unchangeable behavioral forces spanning multiple people that devalue individual lives, get stronger the more people there are to fear them, yet while having instincts to consume those people, and the most on-the-nose one would be the one about control. Whatever you spend your life to achieve through a system, anything you fight against or even lose to, would all be to that system's gain, as it would have been something the system had already planned to accommodate every resulting scenario with to make the most out of. The problem you'd be trying to fight, whether it's a devil hunter against the gun devil, or the average career worker providing for their family, would be something that system's enabled or even engineered so it can stay in existence and get whatever work it really wants out of you. The system wouldn't value people, it would value using people, so it'll always just eat someone up, and keep them under its control within it, as or until it does so. If you try to reason with it, the act of reasoning itself validates and reinforces that system. So if you never push it or force it to grow, by challenging it in some way, all you can do is go through the loop it creates, where your only two possibilities are maintaining what you still have, or stumbling and losing a tiny bit until you're eaten up. So a character like Aki is screwed from the start. He's motivated by this drive to get revenge because the world is terrible, but he takes his revenge out on the first target given to him by the world. So the overall scheme of Makima's he actually contributes to can take advantage of his anger for whatever it can milk out of him. And then he's abandoned because as passionate and dedicated and relatable and strong as he may be, a system like Makima's is inherently built from the fact that there are tons of people like him. The fact that it spans multiple people is what makes it a system so he's just as significant as the next forgettable employee in the long term. The majority of the side characters, whether they be a protagonist or antagonist, has their own individual pasts, motivations, and plenty of other aspects that makes a character uh, a character, with the main difference being their association with Denji. Which actually brings me to my next point. Yeah. They really- Chainsaw, the Kumars yeah. really love Chainsaw, me! Yeah. They totally Chainsaw, love me! Yeah. Chainsaw, Looks yeah. Max, will ya? Yeah. The truth Chainsaw, is, yeah. I... Chainsaw, the yeah. real truth is... Chainsaw, yeah. I'm tired of eating chicken alfredo for breakfast. What I really want is the grimace shake for breakfast every morning. I Initially, Denji and Aki's relationship was hostile, only tolerating each other for self-interested reasons. But as their bond deepens, Aki starts to take on the role of a big brother figure for Denji, something he was never able to experience as a child and provides reassurance throughout the chaos and dangers of their line of work. Aside from that, the relationship doesn't really go anywhere else. Perhaps if Aki did not die when he did, the relationship could have deepened even more. 
That aside, even with his lack of development before his death, it was just enough to elevate Denji's character development even further. He starts to realize how much he actually cared about the people around him, and with power gone just a couple of chapters after, gives in to Makima's influence and indirectly breaks Pochita's contract. Denji losing control over Pochita can also be symbolized as him reaching a new low point in his life, losing the two people he truly cared about. With all these factors combined, Denji's grief is elevated and further dramatized with Aki's climactic development, while at the same time does not take him away from the spotlight. The main reason why his development with Denji and his character seem so surface level is because Makima most likely didn't think any further than that, only wanting someone to get emotionally attached to Denji, which further emphasizes Makima Makima's lack of understanding of humans, but honestly, that's a whole video within itself. Maybe I'll make a video about her later. You want to beat 2020 mode, Denji? Aiden Ross. There's not a Fortnite player who doesn't know his name. With a, <laughs> with a Mr. Beast collab, he gave 50 Apple Visions to the homeless. He never ends a 1v1 on a loss and never leaves his duo alone. Are you with me, Beta Nation? This isn't a zero build lobby we're glazing right now. I'm talking about the man who always cranks 90s, no matter how many times he hits the witty. Aiden Ross. Symbolically or thematically, Akima was made to be average and eventually forgotten. Whether this is because of Makima's influence or just his general personality is irrelevant. What Aki provided was a character to further elevate Denji's development, and he somehow does it effortlessly. With just the minimum amount of substance you could give to a character, the amount of development he was able to provide Denji was surprising, which is in my opinion the most intriguing part about his character. He is somehow, with the barest of minimums, a perfect plot device and nothing else. A clean slate, a pawn perfect for Makima's manipulation. While bland, he somehow is very important in the series as a whole, and that's what I find so interesting. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of slack for ripping on his character, but the truth is the fact that he's this boring is what makes him so interesting of a character to me. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips with some audio. Enjoy. You double your age, I know what Overflow is, okay? Wait, is Overflow the one I'm thinking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm not rating Overflow! I'm not rating- wait, I'm not rating Overflow. I'm not rating Overflow. I will rate Oshinoko. I will rate Oshinoko. Alright, let's rate Oshinoko and forget about Overflow. Alright, let me lock in. Yeah, I told you I'm the fucking best. I told you. I told you. I told you. Give me that shit. Oh my god. Do you know what's funny? Do you know what's funny? Do you know what's funny? I am one soju bottle in. I am one soju bottle in this whole stream, okay? Hold on, let me just chunk the rest of it. Aha! Like, come on, man. It's that easy. I'm gonna put you in romance for shit. If you. Oh god, here we go again. Here we go again. Brace yourselves. Here we go again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hello? Okay, that was weird. Uh, let's just forget the last, like, five seconds and, um, let's, um, let's keep going here.